my name is Elizabeth Hoover de Galvez, and today I'm going to teach you my system to memorize the Library of Congress classification. Why would you want to do this? Well, the Library of Congress classification is used in most academic libraries in the United States, and if you know the system, then you can more easily browse the stacks without um, looking at a catalog. If you just want to go and find the psychology books, uh, in any academic library you visit, you can do that by knowing the letter that uh, is associated with psychology. It is also an easy way to get an introduction to a couple of systems or mnemonic techniques in the art of memory. One of the systems I'll be teaching you is called the peg list memory method. And basically what we'll be doing is taking a list of items that we are familiar with the order of and then linking that to the things that we want to remember. So in this example, or in this uh, analogy, the this nails or the pegs will be animals that we have um, that start with each letter of the alphabet. And those will represent each letter of the Library of Congress classification. And then the keys represent the um, symbols of the subjects we want to remember. So to get started with the first letter, the first letter in the Library of Congress classification is A. and the symbol for this is, um, or the animal for this is ants, crawling across um, the symbol, which is a stack of encyclopedias. And that is because A in the Library of Congress represents uh, general works like encyclopedias. For B, we have a B buzzing in the ears of three figures here, a psychotherapist, a um, religious figure and a philosopher and these um, this is because the letter B represents three subjects in the Library of Congress and so we're going to imagine that these um, people are all sitting around a table at a restaurant together and the bees are really bothering them by buzzing in their ears. For the letter C we've got a chicken and C in the Library of Congress is auxiliary sciences of history for example archaeology. So this chicken is pecking at an archaeological dig. In the Library of Congress, D uh, is the subject of world history. So we have a dinosaur riding a bike on a tightrope of history. And the, the tightrope is actually kind of a timeline also. So it's a tightrope timeline of history. And we've got various symbols of uh, world history on the timeline. For E and F, we have American history, and so we have various symbols here with um, various symbols of American history with an elephant and a frog running along the timeline. For G, this represents three subjects. The giraffe in this image has roller skates on for recreation. He's got a magnifying glass to study the geography of the globe. And while he's studying the geography of the globe, he's also studying anthropology, the cultural um, groups represented by the symbols on the top of the globe. And if you forget that giraffes and G represent recreation, I've also got this amazing uh, um, image of giraffes doing a high, high dive from Nicholas DeVoe. Uh, short film. For H, we have um, the subjects, three subjects, or, or social sciences basically, and we're representing that with three subjects here. A sociologist, an economist, are racing their horses, and um, a statistician is betting. So all three of those subjects are within the social sciences um, according to the Library of Congress classification. And you might also notice that we have some iguanas on the track. And this is because the letter I in the Library of Congress does not represent any subject. So anytime you see a dead animal in this system, um, it will remind you that that letter does not represent any, any subjects. The J represents political science. So here we have Hillary Clinton, uh, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump as jellyfish, stinging each other with insults during a debate. K is for law, so we have a kangaroo banging a gavel. 
L is for education, so we have a lion who's angry with his students for not paying attention, so he scrapes the board with his, the chalkboard with his claws, making a horrible screeching sound. M is for music, so we have mice jumping out of this drum set. You might imagine that someone goes to sit down and start playing the drums, and that's when all the mice suddenly start jumping out and escaping and scurrying away. Uh, next we have a narwhal, which represents fine art. So the narwhal has broken up through the ice to view this fine art museum. And sadly, he's very sad because he sees that an owl, uh, one of the images is a dead owl. So O does not represent any subject in the Library of Congress. Next we have penguins who approach you speaking a variety of languages and you don't understand them, and so they go off and climb their towers of, of literature. So um, P in the Library of Congress is language and literature. And next we have a, a quail for Q, representing science in the Library of Congress. So this quail is doing some research um, work. Next we have R for um, medicine, and this white rabbit is very late for surgery. Uh, here's another image to remember uh, that R represents medicine. Next we have a snake eating a full ear of corn. You can imagine how uh, the snake will really start to bulge out his body when uh, he's digesting this ear of corn. And this is because S represents agriculture. Next we have a turtle looking at a laptop because T is um, for technology in the Library of Congress. U is military science, so we have some unicorns on a tank fighting a battle. V is for naval science, so we have a vulture riding along on this naval ship. And when the torpedoes go off and kill the whales, the x-ray fish, and the yaks, the vulture has plenty of meat to eat. And this is, of course, because um, W, X, and Y do not have any subject in the Library of Congress. And that brings us to our final letter, which is Z for, um, uh, we have a zebra, and the Zs are bibliographies and library science. So we have a, a zebra librarian uh, at the library. To strengthen all of these images, um, of course, try to add action. And I kind of talked about some of the actions as I went through each of the, um, each of the letters. But then also, it may be helpful for you if you actually place each of these images along a pathway in your favorite library. So let me show you an example. Uh, the first letter was A with the ants, and I've placed the encyclopedias on the front steps of my, of my academic library, um, Stewart Memorial Library and Co. College. And these ants are crawling all over these encyclopedias, which some students have left out after a picnic and I have to go up and pick the books up and I have ants crawling all over me as I'm carrying them back inside the front doors. Uh, of course, as I step in the next, in the, inside the front doors of my library, I would then place the next letter. So I'd have a restaurant inside the main entryway and at the restaurant I would have, um, you know, the psychotherapist, the religious figures and the the philosophers all sitting around while bees are buzzing in their ears. So I would just go in through each room of my library and add one of these images along the path. Um, if you want to remember subclasses, you could add a, an additional PEG list. So um, let's, let's say we want to use foods as the second layer. Here we have the Bs, which represent the three subjects. So to remember which um, letters go with each subject, we can add foods. So BF is for psychology. Um, so we have fruit with the psychotherapist. And then um, BJ, BD, and BC. We have the jello, the donuts, and the chocolate with the philosopher. So each of those is a different um, subclass that represents philosophy. And then um, we have some spaghetti on the Bible, and so BS is for the Bible. And the waiter is bringing out a lobster to the table of all the religious figures. So that is because BL is kind of a general religion 
um, subject class. And then there's additional classes that I'm not representing here. You just want to remember that the bee is still buzzing around this room and bothering uh, each of the, the restaurant guests. And that is the end of the system. So I do have a printout for you to go ahead and print out each of these subjects, which you can then, um, it's just about three pages. So you can carry that printout around your library as you kind of place each image mentally into the different locations throughout your own building. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me.